Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, just going to look for the arrow for advancing my slides. Wonderful. Okay. All set in the platform here. Thank you so much, Kayla. Well, I'm very happy to be here this morning and really appreciate the efforts of everyone at the Energy Institute to have this special event. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not joined by my very close partner in this project, my co-PI, Dr. Andrew Waxman. He's teaching at the moment, uh, but we are really excited to be able to present the work that we have been doing uh, through the Energy Institute on exploring the fiscal opportunities for transportation in a shifting energy landscape. Uh, and we've been taking a very close look at the role of state legislators in this moment of energy transition. Um, What I'd like to do in this presentation is um, talk a little bit about the motivations for our project and the kinds of research questions we set out to answer, um, and then to really dive right into how we've structured our research and to highlight some of the uh, main findings and contributions uh, that we have uh, been able to complete thus far uh, and talk a bit about our next steps for the project. Um, so we largely came to this project recognizing that uh, in the transportation sector, energy transition has huge implications for how we pay for infrastructure. Uh, given that the majority of resources for uh, infrastructure funding in transportation come from motor fuel taxes, uh, we recognized that the transition to new energy sources and lower carbon fuels uh, really represents a threat to the predominant funding source in transportation. And we also recognized that state legislators play a very significant role in transportation governance and policymaking, particularly with respect to transportation funding. Uh, and so we really wanted to understand how state legislators shape the prospects for energy transition and transportation investment through fuel tax policy. So state legislators uh, really are the ones who hold the reins on uh, how states use motor fuel taxes. And uh, given that this funding source is um, uh, quite unstable uh, in a phase of energy transition, we wanted to focus on those subjects, state legislators. Um, we also wanted to understand how lawmakers generally perceive this conundrum of the shift in transportation energy sources and it poses for our conventional revenue sources, which are you know, reliant on petroleum-based fuel taxes. And we also wanted to understand what kinds of political costs legislators incur for pursuing uh, increases in transportation taxes or other legislative opportunities in this domain. So these were our primary research uh, interests. Um, I will also note that in the transportation policy space, uh, state legislatures have received notably little attention. And given the fact that uh, states and local governments are responsible for paying for about 75% of our transportation infrastructure costs, uh, they really do have a, a significant role to play. So our team was a, a multidisciplinary group uh, comprised of my School of Architecture in our graduate program for regional and community planning. 
Andrew Waxman in the LBJ School, an economist who has focused on transportation and sustainability questions, uh, Mike Walton in civil and environmental engineering, and Brian Jones in government. And uh, this team provided a nice complement of uh, expertise for us to consider the role of state legislatures uh, in transportation energy transition. We were also supported by the Texas Politics Project, specifically Jim Henson and Josh Blank, who were great contributors uh, to our uh, conduct of uh, focus groups and our national survey, as you'll hear about. Uh, Doug Schinkel at the National Conference of State Legislatures really helped us gain access to legislators, a uh, really difficult thing to do, uh, conduct research on political elites. Uh, and we were supported by uh, a, a number of very talented graduate students in government, the LBJ School, and uh, civil and environmental engineering. So our project structure um, was divided into two phases. Um, our ultimate goal uh, was to understand the national landscape uh, among state legislators involved in their state's transportation committees. And before we sort of reached out to our primary research target uh, across the nation, uh, we wanted to do a preliminary research to prepare us for that national survey. And this preliminary work or first phase work uh, involved a, uh, an analysis of existing moves by state legislatures to make changes to their state motor fuel tax structure or state transportation funding, tra uh, uh, funding structure more generally, uh, to inventory the kinds of legislative changes and moves that states have taken to modify or adjust their transportation funding sources uh, in this moment of energy transition, and to also understand uh, from a smaller set of uh, focus groups with state legislators how these lawmakers really uh, sort of be thought and talked about the transportation issues in, in their states uh, and what they perceived as kind of the most uh, pressing problems, how and where energy transition in the sector sort of entered on their radar screen. And this work prepares us, uh, has prepared us for our uh, second phase strategy, which was to launch a national survey of state lawmakers involved in transportation uh, and that is a survey that uh, we have been actively fielding over the last number of months uh, and that we have just closed. So uh, on to some of what we have learned uh, thus far. So first uh, I'll talk a bit about the work that we looked at um, to explore how legislators fare when they make changes to their state gas tax structure. Uh, we were particularly interested in um, uh, empirically testing whether or not makers who raise gas taxes uh, experience some kind of electoral penalty. And uh, if so, um, does that penalty differ based on whether or not uh, you know, road conditions or infrastructure conditions in the state are uh, poor, um, uh, leading us to think that, you know, uh, voters might be willing to tolerate uh, at an increase in the gasoline tax if they perceived that road con conditions required it. So some uh, highlights uh, from this work, um, we did find that there are significant electoral costs for state lawmakers uh, with raising the gas tax. Uh, you know, it, the, it, the likelihood of the incumbent party to retain uh, its share of the votes was significantly lessened uh, when 
the legislature had moved forward with a, a gas tax increase in the previous year. Uh, but we also found that that electoral cost did not appear to be conditioned on road conditions. So, you know, regardless of the condition of infrastructure, uh, voters were not more or less tolerant of gas tax increases. Um, and we uh, did this work, you know, with a variety of uh, checks for robustness, um, you know, uh, testing for uh, interactions with uh, in infrastructure conditions and quality, uh, as well as some economic controls. So our, our next steps uh, with this work uh, is really to um, advance our identification strategy and ensure that we don't have uh, any kind of endogeneity in our um, uh, in our models. Uh, we're doing this by using an instrumental variables approach uh, and various border discontinuity approaches, um, and we're also uh, you know uh, exploring the penalty. Uh, over time. So um, how does the electoral penalty change over time uh, and how does that sort of interact with other um, uh, environmental policies? Our second piece uh, of work here has been to look at what states have been doing to um, uh, to make changes and amendments to the structure of their state level funding sources, primarily the gas tax. Uh, and doing this um, is a, a largely descriptive exercise. So we have assembled data uh, on state legislative changes to the gasoline tax uh, and transportation funding sources in their state over the past 20 years. And we are uh, using that information um, first to uh, sort of uh, tabulate sort of legislator votes uh, on how state lawmakers uh, have supported these changes, um, but also to provide a, a descriptive picture of the kinds of changes and tweaks and modifications or full out abandonment that states have pursued in terms of their motor fuel taxes. And what you see here on the screen uh, is a uh, kind of our results from uh, across the U.S. Uh, state activity on legislative changes to the gas tax over time. Um, you know, some states have been extremely active, some states less active. Um, overall, I think we can say that there is a lot of heterogeneity out there in terms of the kinds of legislative approaches states have taken to their motor fuel taxes in this moment of uh, or increasing period of energy transition. Uh, states have been index indexing their motor fuels taxes to inflation, uh, allowing the revenue source to grow over time without legislative action. Uh, they've pursued a variety of, pro of approaches in terms of how they index, index it or what triggers the indexing. Um, there's a lot of variety in terms of how many times states have adjusted their motor fuels taxes over time and uh, whether or not they allow or have moved to allow the use of sales or taxes on gasoline um, or, you know, whether or not they've swapped, you know, moved from an excise tax to a sales tax uh, or vice versa. Uh, and um, so our, our aim with this research is to provide a, a descriptive uh, picture of the kinds of legislative strategies that states are using and to understand what makes some strategies more attractive than others uh, in this particular moment. Our th third piece of work uh, leading up to our national survey has been legislator focus groups. Uh, we have conducted a series of five focus groups with 
state legislators across the U.S. We've spoken to 23 different legislators from a variety of political contexts in their states. Uh, and uh, primarily, we wanted to kind of identify the framing that would be useful for a national survey. So how did these lawmakers characterize the transportation issues that were top of mind on their state's agendas? How did they talk about uh, policy challenges and transportation and solutions with particular respect to energy transition. Uh, so we did a little bit of groundwork uh, right here in Texas, uh, capitalizing on our location here in Austin, uh, and then branched out to our national focus groups uh, in a subsequent phase. Uh, what you see here is our selection strategy for including representatives in our focus groups. We tried to capture a variety of state political environments based on the level of urbanization in the state, the frequency with which the state had already moved to make changes to their motor fuels tax, and also the numbers of uh, what might qualify as innovative policies in the transportation and energy space. Uh, and what we found here uh, is that most legislators uh, identified transportation funding as one of the top issues uh, in their states. Uh, there seemed to be general consensus that the motor fuel tax was not a viable revenue source going forward, that energy transition really made this uh, unfeasible. Uh, and also that this perennial problem, which is you know not only uh, due to energy transition, but due to structural challenges with the motor fuels tax that have been long lasting, uh, this sort of focus on uh, uh, transportation funding as a chronic problem has kind of limited legislators' bandwidth uh, for pursuing more uh, proactive or innovative solutions to their funding challenges. Um, legislators seem to recognize that electric vehicles and how we tax or uh, in, uh, sort of ask electric vehicle users to contribute to infrastructure has to feature in to funding solutions moving forward. And legislators were also very familiar with uh, a wide array of solutions to addressing funding challenges, uh, but there was a fair amount of difference state to state on whether or not those um, uh, legislators felt their le their particular legislature was likely to move on some of these solutions. Um, some of the other issues uh, that we uh, heard about from the legislatures were how they got information uh, that helped inform their decision making, how they prioritized and framed issues, uh, the kinds of solutions they felt were available, um, uh, and uh, how likely they, they felt their legislatures were to move on these things. Uh, and we also learned about a number of the more innovative policies. I can sort of come back to these uh, in the Q&A. Um, I'm gonna stop here, uh, but I'm happy to address any of these um, uh, state examples of how states are kind of navigating this moment of energy transition and uh, its, uh, implications for their transportation infrastructure revenue stream. So thanks so much. Uh, we're looking forward to the next phase where we are bringing in our data from the survey, which has uh, just closed, and uh, analyzing those results to see if what we learned uh, from our focus groups really holds at a national scale.